In this video, we are going to look at properties of determinants. And I have this quote from your book. The secret of determinants lies in how they change when row operations are performed. So this here is the overview slide, which we'll spend about five minutes just to look at. And then we'll go through each topic in more detail with more examples. The first thing we have is this theorem, which talks about how row operations impact determinants. So if A is a square matrix, then a multiple of one row of A is added to another row to produce a matrix B. Then the determinant of B is equal to the determinant of A. If two rows of A are interchanged to produce matrix B, then the determinant of B is equal to the negative determinant of A. And last, if one row of A is multiplied by K to produce a matrix B, then determinant of B is equal to K times the determinant of A. So we can use a strategy to reduce a matrix to echelon form and then use the fact that the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of its diagonal entries. So this is a theorem from our last video that we will make good use of. Next, we have the theorem that A is invertible if the determinant of A is not zero. We saw this theorem for two by two matrices in our last video, but now we have um, generalized it to any, and any square matrix. So a square matrix A is invertible if and only if determinant of A is not zero. And this theorem also adds the statement determinant of A is not zero to the invertible matrix theorem. Then we have this next theorem that the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of A transpose. So if A is an n by n matrix, the determinant of A transpose is equal to determinant of A, which means now we can substitute the word column for the row, for the word row in this theorem here, determinants and row operations. Now we can talk about determinants and column operations. We will also take, talk about the multiplicative property. So if A and B are n by n matrices, then de the determinant of A times B equals the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And there is a warning. In general, the determinant of A plus B does not equal determinant of A plus determinant of B. But we do have this linearity property of a determinant function. It's a special case, which also um, is very useful, but we are not going to cover it as it's really not studied usually in more advanced courses. But I do have the statement here for your reference. And that, that concludes our overview, so we'll go back through each topic with examples. Our first theorem is about how row operations affect determinants. So this is for a square matrix. So if we have a multiple of one row of A and we add it to another row to produce a matrix B, then the determinant is unchanged. If we interchange two rows of matrix A to produce B, then the determinant changes just by a negative sign. And now if we multiply a matrix by a scalar K then the, to produce a matrix B, then the determinant of B is equal to that scalar K times the determinant of A. And the idea is we want to use the, this theorem here to reduce a matrix to echelon form, noting how the determinant will change, and then use the fact that once we're in echelon form, that we have a triangular matrix, and the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of its diagonal entries. The example we will use is compute the determinant of A, where A is the matrix with column vectors 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 4, 8, 7, and 2, negative 9, 0. Here I've written my matrix A with the determinant signs, and now I'm going to use these row operations. So and again, the goal is to produce a, an echelon form matrix. So this is very similar to what we've been doing in all the other chapters. So I'm going to start by adding, uh, I'm going to replace row 2 with row 2 plus 2R1. So when I multiply this by 2 and add them, here I'll get a 0. Oh, I'll also get a 0 here, and here I'll have 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 9 gives me a minus 5. On the bottom, I'm going to replace row 3 with row 3 plus row 1. So here I add these together, I get 0, add these, I get 3, and 2 and 0 gives me 2. And now I'm going to interchange row 2 and 3, just to say I did. So here I have my first row, 1, negative 4, 2. My second row is now going to be 0, 3, 2, 
and my last row will be 0, 0, negative 5. Since I interchange rows, I do need then to add this negative sign in front of my determinant. Now I have my triangular matrice, matrix, so I have my negative 1, and then the determinant of this is going to be just the diagonals multiplied together, so 1 times 3 times negative 5. So my final answer will be the determinant is equal to 15. Our next example is to compute the determinant of A, where A is the matrix with column vectors 2, 3, negative 3, 1, negative 8, negative 9, 0, negative 4, 6, 5, 1, 0, and 8, 10, negative 2, 6. So here I've copied my matrix A and I put the determinant signs around it. And the first thing I did is I divided the top row by the constant 2. So here, my 2, negative 8, 6, 8 becomes 1, negative 4, 3, 4. But when I do this, I've used this rule, number 3, here. So I need to multiply my entire determinant by 2. So here I have 2 times my new determinant. Now I'm going to do some row operations. First, I'm going to replace R2 by R2 minus 3 times R1. So First I wrote R1, and now R2 is going to be replaced by R2 times 3 times R1. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12 plus negative 9 is 3. Negative 3 times 3 is 9 plus 5 is negative 4. And negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2. I'm also going to replace row 3 by row 3 plus 3 R1. So negative, oh no, positive 3 times r1 is 3 plus negative 3 is 0. Positive 3, that would be times negative 4 is negative 12, plus 0 is negative 12. Positive 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. And positive 3 times 4 is 12, minus 2 is 10. And then finally, row 4 is going to re be replaced by row 4 minus r1. So here I have my 0, I have my 0, this would stay nine, minus 3, and this is going to be 2. The next thing, and all of these rows where we add different uh, multiples of one row to another, it doesn't produce, uh, it doesn't change our determinant. So nothing, there's no negative signs, and, you know, it just stays the same in front. So now the next step we're going to do is replace this third row with the third row plus 4R2, and this is the matrix I get. So I have in my third row now, 0, 0, minus 6, 2. All the other rows stay the same. But now, for my next row, uh, row operation, I'm going to replace row 4 with minus 1 half R3. So that leaves us on the final last row, my fourth row, will be 0, 0, 0, 1. And now I can just multiply my diagonal because now I have my triangular form. So I have 2 times 1 times 3 times negative 6 times 1. So my determinant is equal to negative 36. The next theorem we want to consider is A is invertible if the determinant of A is not 0. So again, we had seen the 2 by 2 version of this theorem in the previous video, but now we're generalizing it for an n by n. A square matrix A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is not equal to zero. And also just a note that this theorem adds this, this statement, determinant of A is not equal to zero to the invertible matrix theorem. I've cleared out most of our overview, but I did keep how determinants and row operations are related, as well as our last theorem, A is invertible if and only if determinant of A is not zero. So we'll do this example. Compute the determinant of A, where A is the matrix with column um, vectors 3, 0, negative 6, negative 5, negative 1, 5, 7, negative 8, 2, negative 3, negative 7, 0, and negative 5, negative 6, 4, 9. I've written my matrix here. Now I want to start computing the determinant. So I start with some row operations. I replace row 3 with 2 times r1. So for row 3, I get 0, 5, negative 3, negative 6. And I notice row 2 and 3 are the same, which means then I can replace r3 with 
r3 minus r2, so that r3 now becomes a row of 0, 0, 0, 0. And now from our last video, we did these cofactor expansions, so we can expand the determinant now along the third row, and that will give us 0 since the third row is just full of zeros. So our determinant now is equal to 0. Our next example is determine the determinant of A, where A is the matrix with column vector 0, 2, 0, negative 2, 1, 5, 3, negative 5, 2, negative 7, 6, 4, negative 1, 3, 2, negative 2. Here I have my matrix A with the determinant symbols around it. I'm going to replace the fourth row with row 4 plus row 2, which will give us for the fourth row 0, 0, negative 3, 1. And now I'll do a cofactor expansion using column 1 because there's so many zeros here. It's tempting just to do that. So this one would give, just remembering my negative signs, here this would be positive. This next one here, when we expand with this next term, we start, it alternates to become a negative. So now we have negative 2 in our, in our cofactor expansion then. We use the matrix where we eliminate the row and column that this 2 is in. So we're going to have the matrix 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 6, 2, and then 0, negative 3, 1. So I'm doing a little bit of cofactor expansions. I'm doing a little bit of row reduction. So this is our new matrix or determinant that we're trying to determine. Now I'm going to replace row 2 with row 2 minus 3, row 1. So row 2 becomes 0, 0, 5. And then next, I'm going to swap row 2 and row 3 so that I have echelon form. But when I do that, again, according to the theorem up here, two rows of A are interchanged, then I need to introduce an additional negative sign in front of my determinant. Well, that will make my negative 2 positive. And then I can swap these two rows. So I have the determinant of 1, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 3, 1, 0, 0, 5. So now I have 2, and then going down the um, diagonal, 2 times 1 times negative 3 times 5. So my determinant is equal to negative 30. Our next theorem is the multiplicative property. So if A and B are n by n matrices, then the determinant of A times B is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And we do have this warning. In general, the determinant of A plus B does not equal determinant of A plus determinant of B. We only have this multiplicative property. And for our example, we want to verify this theorem, the multiplicative property, for A and B. So A is equal to 6, 3, 1, 2, and B is equal to 4, 1, 3, 2. These are nice, easy 2 by 2 matrices. So the determinant of 6, 3, 1, 2 is 6 times 2 minus 1 times 3, which is equal to 9. The determinant of 4, 1, 3, 2 is 4 times 2 minus 3 times 1, which is equal to 5. So the determinant of A times the determinant of B is equal to 9 times 5, which is 45. Now I can multiply A times B. So I have my 6, 3, 1, 2 times 1, 4, 3, 2. So multiplying row times column, I have 6 times 4 plus 1 times 1. Now the row times the next column, 6 times 3 plus 1 times 2. Now the bottom row times the first column, 3 times 4 plus 2 times 1, and then the bottom row times the second column, 3 times 3 plus 2 times 2. So I get the vector 25, 14, 20, 13. I'm sorry, the matrix 25, 14, 20, 13. Now when I take the determinant, I cross multiply and I get 25 times 13 minus 20 times 14, which is also equal to 45. So I have verified this multiplicative property of determinants. So it's important to know that in general determinant of A plus B does not equal determinant of A plus determinant of B. So in other words, the determinant function is not a linear function. But there is this linearity property of a determinant function, which is kind of the special case. And I have it here for your reference, but we are not going to cover it. And in general, it's very useful, but it's generally studied in more advanced courses. But I have this slide here just so you're aware that there is um, some information in your book about this. 
Now we've covered all the material in this video, so I do have three more questions, but since we have covered the material, I'm going to suggest after I do the problem statement for each of the next three questions that you pause the video and give them a try yourself before you look at the solutions. The first problem is to compute the determinant of the matrix with column vectors 1, 2, 0, negative 3, negative 3, negative 5, negative 4, 10, 1, negative 1, 5, negative 6, and negative 2, negative 2, 1, 8. And we want to do this with as few steps as possible. Here I have my original matrix, and I start by replacing row 2 with row 2 minus 2, row 1. So our second row becomes 0, 1, negative 3, 2. And then I replace row 3 with row 3 plus 3, row 1. So the next, the third row becomes 0, negative 4, 5, 1. So you see that I have a lot of zeros here, so that's a good thing. But I did do one more replacement. I replaced row 4 with row 4 minus row 2, so row 4 becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, which is even better because now if we do a cofactor expansion along the bottom row, we will see that the determinant is equal to 0. The next problem is to use a determinant to decide if vector 1, vector 2, vector 3 are linearly independent, where v1 is equal to 5, negative 7, 9, v2 is equal to negative 3, 3, negative 5, and v3 is equal to 2, negative 7, 5. To outline our strategy, we are going to use this theorem here from this video, as well as the invertible matrix theorem from the previous video. So first we have the fact that a is invertible if the determinant of A is not zero. Second, by the invertible matrix theorem, A is invertible if and only if the columns of A are linearly independent. So these two, put, combining these together, that means the columns of A are linearly independent if and only if the determinant of A is not zero. So this is what we're going to look at. If the determinant of A is not zero, then we'll conclude that A is linearly independent. If the determinant of A is 0, we'll determine A is dependent. I start here with matrix A, where each column is uh, the vectors 1, 2, and 3. So A has column vectors 5, negative 7, 9, negative 3, 3, negative 5, 2, negative 7, 5. And I start by uh, replacing row 2 with row 2 plus R row 1. So for row 2, now we'll have negative 2, 0, negative 5. And now we're going to do a cofactor expansion along column 2. So we have our negative 3 times our negative 1 times, and in this case, uh, negative 3 is the uh, first row, second column. So that's 1 plus 2. Kind of reverse these. And then we're going to multiply that times the matrix, excluding the first row, second column. Then we have 0 in our next, for our next uh, expansion term. And then our last expansion term is negative 5. Now we have negative 1, and the negative 5 is uh, row 3, column 2. So it's negative 1 to the 3 plus 2. And also A now is to the 3, 2, the matrix A deleting row, uh, row 3, column 2. So here we have negative 3 times negative 1, which is 3, and then times A12. So A12, first row, second column, we're deleting these, what the, you know, the second column, first row, and we're left with the matrix 2, negative 5, 9, 5. Then we have plus 0. Over here, we have negative 5 times negative 1, which is just 5, times A32. So A32, that's the third row, second column, and we're deleting the corresponding row and column, and we're left with the matrix 5, negative 2, 2, negative 5. Calculating this out, now we have 3 times um, negative 5 times, I'm sorry, negative 2 times 5 is 10, minus negative 45, so we have plus 45. Then we have 5, then 5 times negative 5 is 25, minus negative 2 times 2 is 4, so we get a positive 4, and finally, we get that's equal to 0. So since this is 0, that must be A is dependent, linearly dependent. The columns are linearly dependent. 
Our last problem is let A be an n by n matrix such that A squared is equal to the identity matrix. We want to show that the determinant of A is equal to plus or minus 1. And we're going to use our multiplicative property. So if A and B are n by n matrices, then determinant of AB is equal to determinant of A times determinant of B, which means the determinant of A squared then is equal to determinant of A times determinant of A. Now we are given that a squared is equal to i, so the determinant of a squared is the determinant of i, which is equal to 1. And we know the determinant of i is equal to 1 because we just multiply the entries along the diagonal. It's upper triangular. So now we have determinant of a squared is also equal to, by a multiplicative property, determinant of a times the determ determinant of a, which implies that now setting, what are we, these two things equal, these two lines equal, because this is equal to this, that must mean that our determinant of i, which is equal to 1, is equal to determinant of a times determinant of a. So we have determinant of a times determinant of a is equal to 1. So here we have determinant of a, the whole thing is now squared which means if we take the square root of both sides, we get determinant of A is equal to plus or minus 1. Reviewing what we have gone through in this video, we looked at properties of determinant. First, we had this theorem that talked about how row operations affect determinants. So if we add a multiple of one row of A to another row of A to produce a matrix B, then the determinant remains unchanged. If two rows of A are interchanged to produce a matrix B, then the determinant is the same with the exception of a negative sign, and it, uh, um, multiplication by a negative sign. Now, if one row of A is multiplied by a constant K to produce the matrix B, then the determinant of B is equal to the, is the uh, constant K times the determinant of A. And we use these strategies to try to produce a matrix in echelon form and use the fact that the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of its diagonal entries. Next, we have this theorem that said A is invertible if and only if uh, the determinant of A is not equal to zero. And this theorem, we had the uh, two by two case in a different video, but here we have the generalization now. So if the determinant of A is not zero, then A is invertible. This also means that to the um, invertible matrix theorem, we can add the statement determinant of A is not zero. Next, we have this theorem, determinant of A is equal to determinant of A transpose. And what this does is it allows us to substitute in this theorem here about determinants and row operations. Everywhere you see row, you can substitute the word column, and it's still a valid theorem. Last, we did this uh, multiplicative property. So the determinant of the uh, product of two matrices is equal to the product of the two determinants. And we do also have this warning in general, determinant of the sum of two matrices is not equal to the sum of the two determinants. And this is one of the examples we had done in this video. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.